Did you know your my card, or at least your voting address, can actually determine your voting power? According to this incredibly well-designed report by Malaysia Kini, and no, we're not jealous at all. In G15, one vote in Igan Sarawak will be worth 10 times more than a vote in Bangi Selangor. Why is this happening? Here's a breakdown. So there's this thing called malapportionment. It's when electoral districts are created in a way that's not quite fair. So the good people of the Igan constituency, for example, can vote an MP into parliament with just over 28,000 registered voters. On the other hand, the nearly 300,000 voters in Bangi will also have just one MP. This difference in vote value is thanks to these troublemakers, the people behind the Undi 18 movement. Before their newfangled ideas on lowering the voting age to 18 and automatic voter registration, the vote difference between Igan and Bangi was 9.13. Okay, that was already pretty bad. But because they helped increase Malaysia's eligible voting population by 40.9%, the disparity in vote value just got higher. In fact, it's the worst we've ever had and we're now ranked 13th in the world for malapportionment. Malaysia Boli. So I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that's also one of the common uh, uh, comments that Undi 18 has received over the past two years. But however, it doesn't mean that we, we should have not passed Undi 18. Because for me, fundamental democracy must be inclusive. And I think every reform we do is one step closer to that. So we need to pressure politicians on both sides to address the issue of malapportionment. But who cares what these kids think? Let's find out more about big words like malapportionment, gerrymandering, and a possible solution to this, redelineation. So the disparity in vote value involves two long-standing problems. First, there's malapportionment, which we talked about earlier and which actually goes against the federal constitution, which states that the number of electors within each constituency in the state ought to be approximately equal. Gerrymandering, on the other hand, is the process of influencing the composition of voters in electoral districts to gain an unfair advantage. This is accomplished by cracking and packing. So if let's say we have 40 supporters of the red party and 60 supporters of the blue party, they should probably get a proportionate amount of representation in parliament, right? 40, 60. But cracking is when opposition supporters get divided or cracked apart over several constituencies, diluting their voting power. Packing, on the other hand, means concentrating as many of the opposition supporters into one constituency so that they probably win that one constituency and lose the rest. So combining the two, you would have different values of a ballot for supporters of different parties. The worst case that we knew in recent history happened in 2004, when one ballot for BN was worth 26 ballot for PKR. With AVR and Undi 18, young people are severely underrepresented because they are disproportionately concentrated in urban centres, simply because more employment and education opportunities. In the past, people like to think that this is an ethnic issue. Naming, you create large constituency to underrepresent the non-Malays and small constituency to overrepresent the Malay. What we are seeing today is no longer an inter-ethnic issue. It is an intra-Malay issue and intergenerational. So what it means is that if you migrate from rural area to urban area, you are getting yourself punished politically, especially the Malay youth. So their grandparents back home in their kampung would have more say, but they themselves would have much less say. How do you expect politicians to listen to them and to implement policy that would best advance their interests? This is an injustice. I would call it even a political crime against the young generation. So how do we solve this? That would involve our third big word of the day, redelineation. It is the regular redrawing of electoral district boundaries, which you need to do because obviously populations change, people migrate, and you have new voters coming of age. Redelineation exercises are supposed to make constituencies as mentioned earlier, approximately equal. And they can be done once every eight years. The next one's scheduled for 2026. The Election Commission is responsible for redelineation exercises and is supposed to get feedback from the public, state governments, and local authorities, but ultimately, it's decided by a vote in parliament. And therein lies a major problem. This is where the trick is. You need only one half to pass a boundary. So any government with a simple majority can push through 
the boundaries they want. To prevent that, experts like Chin Huat are proposing amendments to the constitution that would safeguard against malapportionment. For example, we could have a rule where the voting population in the largest constituency cannot be double what it is in the smallest constituency in a state. So, if the Igan constituency has 28,000 voters, then the largest constituency in that state should have a maximum of 56,000 voters. And that's just to make sure there's no malapportionment within each state. At the national level, there's also malapportionment of parliamentary seats among the different states. For for example, Selangor's population has grown significantly, but the number of parliamentary seats they have is still the same. In that sense, Selangor is very much underrepresented and experts are saying that they should probably get a few more seats. But even with such reforms and constitutional safeguards, there's still a huge fundamental problem that would probably continue to make malapportionment worse. For redelegation to be done in a genuine manner, I think election commission needs to be taken out of the prime minister's office. Otherwise, we will never have a truly independent election commission. We will never have election commissioners that can actually separate politics and professional. That's right, Malaysia's election commission is actually parked under the the Prime Minister's office. We probably don't have to explain why that's bad, right? When you allow for these commissions to be truly independent, I guarantee that we'll definitely be able to see more transparency and a lot more justice on how our country is being governed because you have separation of powers. So basically in Malaysia, we have serious fundamental issues with malapportionment, gerrymandering, redelineation, and even the election commission itself. I'm not gonna lie, it looks pretty bleak. But regardless of how unfair the value of your vote might be, you still need to vote. Because if you don't exercise your right to shape your future, then nothing will ever change. And if there's one thing those annoying Undi 18 people have shown us, it's that change is possible. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching until the end. Uh, we know this is a pretty heavy and complex topic and there's so much more we could have covered. Uh, for example, there's actually some justification for creating constituencies with smaller populations, especially in rural areas like Igan. So for one, if the population is sparse and spread out over a large geographic area, it might be impractical for voters to reach polling stations so you can't make the constituency any larger. Anyway, it's quite a bit to unpack, so we'll leave you a link in the comments. Go check it out and tell us what you think. Uh, and if you want to support our work, please make sure to follow and subscribe to Farf on all our channels. Happy voting, everyone!